you can actually save a ton of money on your acquisition cost if you live in your flips. That's the topic of today's show. Let's dive in. Back, 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 back to those days. I was running, 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 running in one place. Set a, set a, set a, set a, set a, set a, set a pace. Feel like I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been running in one place. Yeah, I've been feeling pretty good. I've been feeling great. I've been feeling how I should, how I really should. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the House Flipping Show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise. Behind the scenes, I got my man Tommy cutting up the footage for you. The House Flipping Show, guys, this is a completely educational show. We don't have anything on this show to sell you unless, of course, you like the hoodie that I'm currently wearing, in which case you're going to want to click the show notes below. Go ahead and use promo code HWTV10. Grab yourself a 10% discount on any of our apparel. But outside of that shameless plug, guys, this show, it's all about education, right? House flipping. A lot of us make a ton of money. It's a very popular thing in the real estate industry. I've made some pretty good money flipping homes. And, you know, what we do on the show is uh, we highlight some of the homes I flipped, and we also talk to investors, you know, from around the world about their flips. Seasoned investors, new investors, everybody in between. I think there's something to learn from every house that's flipped. In today's show, I had a conversation with a kid out of Connecticut. His name is Ryan. He actually purchased this home with the intent to live there and flip it. The kid, he's a hustler, man. He reminds me of myself when I got started because my very first purchase in real estate was like 08 or 09. And uh, I actually lived there, but then later turned that into an investment. So we got some similarities there. So I really wanted to talk to the kid. As a matter of fact, Tom, he reminds me of you quite a bit. You got a similar thing going with the house you just purchased. About your house, like what, what, six months ago or something? Yeah, about, about six months ago, I redid the bathroom and the kitchen. And uh, I think I plan on selling it in about a year or so. That's awesome, Tom. Guys, I remember when Tom was uh, buying that house, right? And his biggest thing, he was like, just question after question after question about ARV of the neighborhood. Because if I recall, Tom, that was like a like a little old lady house, right? Yeah, the kitchen was from like 1957 or something like that. Yeah, see, like, you know, when he bought that particular home, man, he wanted to target something undervalued so he can get in there and really build up that equity. Because he don't want to live in that house forever, guys. He wants to move on to something big, but he's got to make money on his exit, right? So killing two birds with one stone. That's what Tom's doing. That's what Ryan did. And that's what I did back in the day when I got started. So I love having conversations with these guys in their, you know, earlier, mid 20s remind me of myself you know really getting in there hustling and able to turn a very small amount of money into something that you could build upon and build upon and build upon so without further ado let's get into my conversation with ryan from connecticut all right ryan so you did something um you told me your story on bigger pockets uh you know i had a thread on there where we were doing some house flip shows for some other investors and you reached out to me about your story and you weren't 100 percent sure if it's what we were looking for because it's a, it's a little bit different, and uh, I loved it, dude. I, I liked your story quite a bit. Thanks. You flipped a house, but you lived in there with your wife. Um, can you just break down the overview for me of like how the purchasing of that home went? I know you bought it for 165000 but did you and your wife buy this property with the intent to sell it for a profit, or did that just kind of happen? Yeah, it's a good question. So when we were like looking for houses, I was just early stages getting into real estate. Um, of course, thanks to bigger pockets. So I was trying to do my best to you know, like figure out how can I make this house be an investment, but also it was like a lot of luck involved. It was trying to figure out what I want to do and meeting that with what my wife was looking for as well. And we got lucky to find a foreclosure in the town that we wanted to buy in. And after doing the inspection, which my uncle fortunately did, he's a contractor just kind of asked him like, you know, what do you think? Is this a house that looks good? And he just said, you know, it's, it's a good house. You won't lose money. And that's all we needed to kind of go ahead and see what we could do with it. That was all we were looking for. Make sure we didn't lose money first and foremost. Okay. Now you lived there for how long before you sold it? Uh, a little over two years. Okay. Two years. And uh, we'll put some of the pictures up on the screen now so investors can see what you guys did. Um, you guys totally redid that kitchen. You know, you did some nice work. Uh, so I have a few questions about this live in flip. Number one, uh, how, how, how did it go? How was it, uh, living in a renovation project? Uh, maybe not so much as how was it 
with you living there, how did your wife deal with you living there? And how did you deal with your wife yelling at you for making her live in a live and flip? I mean, I'm a married guy. I could only imagine yeah. how many nights I'd spend on the couch if I uh, tried to get my wife to do that. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Um, it was definitely a good, good step in our, uh, our relationship for sure. I think we weren't married. Yeah, we weren't married at the time. So that was a big hurdle to overcome. But um, no, I mean, it was a learning process for both of us. So it was definitely difficult for her to, she's really good at design and decorating and, and that worked out well, but she was very difficult with the patience of like, why is this taking so long to tile a floor or to do this and that? So um, it was a slow and steady process, but it worked out pretty well, well enough that she was willing to go into a, a second one, which we're currently in, which we might get to later. Okay. And you are a contractor, right? Yeah. But at this time, I don't, I wasn't a contractor at this time. I was just kind of learning. I come from a family of a lot of contractors and people in trade. So I was handy enough to just jump in and figure stuff out at the time. Okay. So during this live and flip then, like, so you're, you've obviously learned the trade now. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, you got a website, you offer a lot of similar products to what we offer here at Holton Wise. And you know, we'll put the the link to where you folks can check out Ryan's business cast farm real estate. We'll put the links and all that jazz in the show notes below. So if you guys, after you hear this show, you want to reach out to Ryan, that's all available for you. Um, but at that time, so you're just like getting into this, right? This is like your first foray, foray into real estate investing. Are you doing like a lot of this work yourself with your family members who were teaching you the business? Are you guys hiring um, contractors just off of the yellow pages? How's this all going? Yeah, so it was literally just 100% on our own. Um, just like doing the work as I can, figuring out as I could, utilizing like leveraging my family's uh, knowledge and expertise when I was, you know, when I would help them to kind of learn the trades and then kind of going home and, and working on the house was kind of my homework. That's how I was figuring out on my own, messing with stuff. And uh, occasionally like it would, you know, it'd be calling uncle to kind of check in, make sure I don't burn the house down. But, but um, that was pretty much it, doing it all ourselves and figuring it out. I like that, man. Learning trial by fire. Like if you're going to fuck something up, you might as well fuck it up on your own house. <laughs> yeah. It's really the best way to get started for sure. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you know, I've done a lot of real estate, right? Um, a lot of people out there have done a lot of real estate, but if anybody out there is like watching this show and uh, they think that they could just like jump into their first deal and they know what they're doing, that's insane. Like I've fucked up so many things uh, mm -hmm. in my career. You don't get from point A to where I'm at today if uh, you don't learn the process. You got to learn the process. And dude, it's smart to learn it on your own home. Like yep. uh, when I got my real estate license, the first sale I ever did was a house of my own. And then my first client who wasn't myself was my brother. So that's where a lot of folks are starting. Yeah. And, and I like what you did here. You know, you got in there, you have to put a roof over your head, right? But you also wanted to learn the business. You wanted to get into real estate. So you kind of killed two birds with one stone yeah. uh, and that's great. And I would imagine since you live there, as far as the financing goes, because, you know, we know you bought the house for 165 K. As far as the financing is concerned, I imagine you got yourself a nice owner occupied loan as opposed to a non-owner occupied loan. What'd your down payment look like? Three and a half percent? Yeah, it was like, you know, roughly three, three and a half percent. So we put around 7,500 down because uh, that I'm pretty sure we went FHA on that. Yeah, we did the conventional like owner occupant, uh, uh, not conventional, but FHA loan. Okay. Nice. So if we just like go through the numbers like quickly, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I like about what you did. And this is why I really wanted to do this show at you when you told me that you actually live there. Like if we just run the numbers, you guys could see him on the screen here. He buys this thing for 165K. Through a ton of sweat equity, he's able to do the reno for 11K. Now normally it would cost you a lot more if you're hiring guys off the street, but you know, he did a lot of it himself. So he saved himself a lot of money. Now closing costs, he's got 7,500. And then he ends up selling this bad boy two years later for 215,000. So he makes a profit of 31,500. What I really like about that $31,500 profit though, Ryan, is you were able to get this profit of 31 and a half K. You covered, you know, your living expenses for two years. And because you actually live there, because this is uh, something that you're doing as an owner occupied person, that's actually like a huge return. If we look at your actual outlay of cash, because you didn't actually ever put up 165,000, right? You put up 75, 
7,500 as a down payment because you live there. And then you put up about 11K in your actual reno cost. So just on my piece of paper here, it looks like all told, you only had to come out of pocket 18 and a half thousand and you ended up net in 31 G's, man. No wonder your wife's still with you. That's not a bad move. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. And, and a lot of things happened along the way with living there over two and a half years. I got my contractor's license, real estate license, as you know. And because I, you know, I, I consider it a, a, a bigger profit than the 31 only because it was a live in flip. So from a bank's perspective, on the day that we closed, we only had to pay off our loan at like around 154000 So, you know, closing day, I represented ourselves as selling the house. You know, we got a check for 50 grand, which was amazing, you know, because again, you know, the renovation, it wasn't really like a total strict flip. It was just kind of paying as we go. So we didn't really have any existing, you know, rehab loans to pay off or anything. You know, we we were able to utilize that check on on buying the next one, which was awesome. Yeah. And you got yourself an awesome education. You kind of, you know, you earned while you learned, uh, which I, I really, really like. So in between the time of starting this project, getting involved, understanding the construction game, you got your real estate license, which another thing, folks, if you guys like want to make money in this business, you got to put in the work, right? Ryan did a few things here. He put in the work by A, being willing to live there, right? So that saved you money on the down payment. As far as the reno goes, he did a lot of that himself. He got the skills to do that. He saved money there. As far as the closing costs go, you'll see here, he only had to pay $7,500. Now, if you're hiring a realtor, you know, just off the street, you're going to pay 7% of that guys. So that right there, that would be 15,000. So he, you know, he cut himself in half. So you're able to like turn very, very tight margins folks into some money by doing some stuff yourself, which is what Ryan did. So let's just talk about like where you're at right now. Cause you had said that, uh, currently you're, you're on to your next project and this is also a live in flip. So what'd you guys do? You took that 50 K and what'd you do with it? What, what's, what's, what's happening right now, brother? Yeah. So we paid off our wedding debt, which was a, a huge thing to get done. Sure. And then we used what was left to buy what's now, yeah, our second live in flip. Um, so it was a HUD house. So like another foreclosure and picked it up in the same town for, for 140 and hoping to kind of put maybe around 25 into it and get it to appraise around 225. And this one, ideally we'd like to hold on to maybe uh, whether it's a rent and, and refi and move out or uh, do something so we can capture that equity, um, maybe not sell it. Now, is your plan to continue like house hacking? Like, are you trying to just move from, you know, move in, do the project, make some money, move into the next one? Are you planning on like uh, piggybacking several of these? Uh, what's on the horizon for you guys? Yeah, it kind of depends. So like I never intended to rope my wife into my own investing career, sure. but it's worked out well and she's happy with it so far. Um, I also do investing with my business partner who's also a family member um, and I work full time as a contractor. So ideally, it's kind of like a gamble to see what happens within the next year, year and a half. And um, ideally, we won't have to keep doing live in flips. Ideally, we may, maybe you can move into the next a permanent home um, cause the investing and uh, a lot of the other stuff I have going on will, will be enough that we don't need to keep moving our permanent residents to make all the investing work, but just kind of where we are now. Have you put a like stricter or tighter timeline on this particular project than you had on the previous one? I know you got to live there at least 12 months, but are you, are you trying to stay two years? Are you trying to get out right after 12 months? Um, yeah, definitely not trying to stay two years necessarily. Um, just trying to do it as quick as we can. Definitely within a year. Uh, but a lot going on with, with doing the contracting work. So it's just kind of doing as much work as we can. It's taken me like a week to just paint one bedroom so far. So um, sure. But I'm sure I'll have some free time coming up. So uh, yeah, a little tighter window, but it's just kind of whenever we have the availability. Now that you're, you know, pretty well into the contracting, right? Like how long have you been doing contracting full time now? Um, like two and a half, three years. Okay, so... You got the home, the first home, right? You're learning as you go, right? I'm sure you're screwing shit up, but you know, I would imagine you seem like a pretty smart dude. I'd imagine you kind of got a handle on things right now. What's it like um, renovating this house versus the first house? Like, are you just kind of flying through certain things? I know you got other jobs and I know how contractors are, man. You know, you guys always position your paying jobs before your own jobs. So I know your, your job, your timeline's still going to take some time. But like when you actually put in the physical hours, I'm sure your hour per task is drastically reduced. Can you kind of like, 
highlight for us some of the differences between what you're currently doing now that you got this skill set versus, you know, jumbling through those first timer mistakes on the first deal. Yeah, I think, um, like I was even talking to my wife when we like close or a week after we close, it's just cool to walk through a house and have like the confidence to just, to not, not pretend like I know everything cause I definitely don't, but to have the confidence to go like, Oh yeah, like I got a good idea and I can handle whatever we come across in this house. So it's definitely cool to not have to be full time searching on YouTube to figure out how to like tile a floor or how to put in a hot water heater. Um, so yeah, it was nice that we were able to walk into this, both be pretty confident and go, okay, like here's what we're going to do. And you have the scope pretty much laid out. And then, like you said, to be able to tackle that scope a little bit more, maybe not quicker, but more efficiently than we would the first time around is, is definitely a huge advantage. In addition to that too, what you added now for the second purchase that you didn't have back then is you got the real estate license too. So like, let's just uh, quickly go over your, your second deal here. I assume it was on the MLS, right? Yeah. Okay. And you got paid probably what? 3%? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So folks, uh, what, how much was the second house again? Uh, 140 is actually it was two and a half percent to me, but yeah. okay. Just so you folks out there are aware, right? This is something that I don't think a lot of folks understand. Like I think a lot of folks are confused as how real estate agents actually get paid. So just to walk you guys who may be brand new at this through this, uh, the way real estate agents are paid is they're paid a commission. Okay. The seller is typically the person who pays that commission. So he bought a HUD house. Uh, so the seller of that home, right, they signed up with a listing broker, okay, and they agreed to play that broker X. Of that X, that broker offered some of the commission to all the buyer's agents on Ryan's MLS out there in Connecticut, okay? So Ryan goes in, he buys this home for 140 k and of course, Ryan's agent needs to get paid. Well, guess who Ryan's agent is, guys? That's Ryan himself. So that's a $3,500 check that came to the seller. So if you guys are trying to flip houses and you're working in mar markets with tight margins, this is great. Ryan made himself $3,500 on the buy. And on the exit, he's probably going to make himself at least half because at that point, remember guys, the sellers are who are paying. So if I'm a listing agent, if I'm a seller and I hire a listing agent and they want 7%, well, Ryan's his own listing agent, so he doesn't need to pay himself that 3.5%. He's only going to pay, you know, whatever's competitive. Sometimes it's 3.5%, sometimes it's 3 Ryan got himself a HUD deal, so he got paid 25 Just so everyone's aware, if you're working with realtors, guys, and you're having them run down HUD deals, there the pay is usually a little bit lower. So maybe you guys want to compensate your realtors on the back end or something, make them a little happier. Uh, but that's just like how you can save money. Okay. You can save money on the buy. You can save money on the sell. So that's what I like. And these are all things that you were able to learn on that first deal, right? You know, yeah. that first deal you did, you're probably like, shit, why did I need to hire that other realtor to help me find it? I'm going to do this myself. And you know, that's kind of how I got into the game, right? Started doing my own deals, all, all that jazz, man. That's great. Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Feal, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at DiscountPropertyWarehouse.com. Have you, uh, were you able to like parlay? Because here's the other thing that I don't think people think about, right? You learned how to do all the stuff on your first slip. 
you're about to do a successful one on your second flip, right? You already kind of understand the game. You're a lot better at this. Are you able to parlay this and offer these services to clients out there in Connecticut, right? Because, you know, there's a huge market for dudes looking for a realtor who understands construction, yeah? Yeah, so that's what I'm kind of uh, trying to work on, figuring out a way to do that and offer that now. And I'm, I'm actually skipping over a major chunk of, of my real estate investing career, which we probably don't, won't have time to get into, but I was able to actually, during that first live and flip, get a job full time, a W2 job working for an investor who I found on Bigger Pockets and work with him for about a year and a half. He was, you know, we flipped and wholesaled uh, like over 65 houses. And so that was like a, a master's degree in real estate investing. Um, well, let's was, talk about that. Let, what was your, how did that, how did that come about? How did you meet this guy and uh, what did he hire you to do specifically? Yeah. So uh, again, like I owe everything to bigger pockets. That's I, when I first started listening. Um, it was when we closed on the house. Basically I listened to like every podcast episode available. Uh, did you listen I, to episode 127 with James Wise? I sure did. I, I didn't make eight grand on my first purchase like you, but I listened. <laughs> <to it. laughs> but um, yeah, so I, found this guy. He was looking for somebody to drive around and take pictures of houses. That was it. He, you know, he called it BPOs, but I was like a nobody. I'm not a broker. Um, so he ended up, I like weaseled my way into getting that job somehow. He paid me $15 a house. Um, that was just like a part-time thing while I was in school and uh, had a part-time job as a grocery store manager. Anyways, long story long, I just kept working there. You know, got he was trying to get rid of me. Actually, he was like, "I'm kind of looking for some other stuff. I need." He's like, "I really need a real estate agent." And I went, "Oh, like I'm getting my license." And he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I'm, I, so I signed up for the like fast track real estate course, which was like seven weeks. Um, he's like, "All right, we'll talk to me when you get your license." So I got my real estate and contractor's license within that time. And then, to my surprise, honestly, he hired me to a, a full time job where I was evaluating and offering on houses for him. Okay. And are you still with him or is that over? No, that's over. That, that ended, um, let's see, like June of 2018. Was it a amicable breakup? You outgrew him, he outgrew you. You're smiling. What happened? Yeah, I think, <laughs> like, I think it was a little bit of both. Yeah, I don't want to like blow up his spot, but he, he just kind of a funny situation. But he called me one Friday and said he's, he's got to let everybody go to kind of, I don't know, just like make it a more profitable business for him. Well, um, you know, that's business 101, right? I mean, yeah. let's, 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 let's look at this. I mean, it sounds like it worked out really, really well for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, here's the deal. As a business owner, that guy, you know, you were completely inexperienced, mm -hmm. uh, totally wet behind the ears. You're young. You were cheap, right? Cheap labor. So, you know, people are targeting guys like that because, you know, it's, it's cheap labor, but that's great. It's a great learning experience for me. You got to take your licks guys. We don't all, like I said earlier, we don't start at the top, right? You start at the bottom. So, you know, it made sense for his business model from a profit loss standpoint. It made sense for you because you're, you're trying to learn, man. You're, you're getting paid, but you're earning while you're learning. You learned the business and, you know, it got to the point where you have more talent. So you require a higher pay and maybe it doesn't work for his model. Um, and you know, he moves on, he finds the next version of you and then you move on to clients who are going to pay you a little bit higher. I know you got a YouTube channel now and you're, you're doing the real estate, you're doing the contracting. So I'd imagine you're, you're putting out what you're doing. So you got more than one guy who wants your services. So I'm sure you ain't as cheap as you used to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 15 bucks for a BPL, that's cheap as shit. You should <laughs> be getting paid like at least 75. And even then that's, it's really hard to make a profit doing BPLs for 75 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, it was definitely, uh, sorry about that. It was definitely amicable and, uh, it, it for sure worked out. And like I said, so I came out of that with like, you know, at the time what felt like a great education in real estate investing. It was able to kind of parlay that education into finishing up that first live and flip. And, and so now we're on to the second one. And like you said, I'm trying to work with my partner to kind of capture everything that we have available to us, capture what, like our, our, you know, resourcefulness and, you know, offer that to clients, like you said. Very nice. Now, as uh, the foremost expert in live-in flips that I've ever interviewed on my show, if you were to give the listeners out here some tips on how to, to, to best deal with living in a flip, living in a renovation project, what would those be? Um, I think patience is, is first and foremost key, but I think it's, it's important to have a plan. Like, I mean, if you're, 
if you're a homeowner of any kind, whether you're real estate investing or not, you know that there's, there's endless work to be done. So if you're just kind of sitting there going like, all right, what am I going to fix today? You're just, you're almost going to never get anything done because everything always needs to be fixed. So it's just kind of like have a plan. And, and for us, you know, we got lucky with the house being in good shape for the first one, but just understanding where, where you can add the equity, kitchens, bathrooms, the cliche, you know, HGTV stuff. Um, it's, it's also true. You know, once you have the, the house like structurally sound and sealed up and waterproofed and it looks good, you know, work on the fun stuff, work on the kitchens, the bathrooms and, and figure out how to make it, you know, appealing to the masses. Yeah, and you guys did, uh, we got the photos on the screen again. You guys did a very, a very modern look here, right? I mean, that, that's what people want, guys. They, they want to see clean, crisp. Did, uh, like, you're on the younger side. So, like, I know, um, I'm 32. My wife, she's 28. I know when we designed uh, our latest home, um, a lot of the things we like seem to be what is the most trendy. And I think you get that with folks in our age range. Um, what I see other folks doing when they try to do projects is, is they design the project based on their wants and their needs and what they like. Um, for my wife and I, what we like happens to be what is the most popular stuff right now. With you and your wife, did you guys choose the designs you chose because those are what's, what's in? Or did you choose that because that's what you wanted? Um, I mean, it's, I can't pretend like I, I had much part in it. It was, it was 100% my wife, but... I think it was like a, a little bit of both. It was what she liked, what she felt fit that house, and, and, and both kind of probably what was popular as well. It, it, it worked out. Well, good thing she liked white cabinets, right? Because yeah. if, if yeah. his wife liked uh, lime green cabinets, guys, that would probably not be the smartest move knowing he's planning on selling it. Yeah. So you folks, you're going to have to bear that in mind. And what's in, guys, is neutral colors, man. You know, yeah. White kitchens are big, neutral colors in the home. You don't want to do a lot of super, uh, super personalized stuff. If you're, if you're planning on, you know, turning this into something you're going to sell or possibly rent down the road. Uh, Ryan, man, thanks for coming on the show. I like this. I like your story and it looks like uh, you're a hustler, man. And it looks like you're kind of in the beginning stages of your career, but I'm, I'm anxious to see what you're going to have coming out next. And I want to follow you for, uh, the foreseeable future. Cause I, I, it seems like you're ready to work. You want to work hard. You don't have a problem taking your licks, man. I think that's very good. If uh, other folks that are listening to this show right now want to follow you, follow your story, um, see, see how you grow. Where can they do that? Yeah. Thank you. First of all, for the kind words and for taking the time with me, I appreciate it. And uh, likewise, definitely keep following you. Definitely love what you guys got going on. Um, it's Ryan Luby on Instagram or castfarm.com. Um, that's probably pretty much it. I mean, you could uh, email me if you want, ryan at castfarm.com. Always love talking to people or, or find me on Bigger Pockets. And yep. I also presume, right, uh, folks over in Connecticut, man, if they need a realtor, I would imagine, you know, do you work with flippers, uh, landlords? Do you work with owner occupied? Who, you know, if I'm living in Connecticut, I need a badass realtor and I'm watching the show right now. Like, who, who are you hoping I am? Yeah, like you said, I mean, I try to gear towards towards investors, flippers, um, but also even first time home buyers. Just trying to like get people in the situation so that you know, w even if they don't have a lot of knowledge, they can buy a house like we did and not lose money. You know, it's like one of the biggest purchases of your life, and a lot of people call it an investment when it's really not. I want to like help people make their home an actual investment um, to set them up for financial success and not not failure or doom if anything goes crazy with the market. So, kind of everything in between, investors. Home buyers, all of them. All right, folks. Again, special thanks to Ryan for coming on, telling his story. He gave you all his contact info in the show. But again, uh, just click the show notes below. I've got links to everything there for you folks. And I want to hear from you guys. If there's anybody else out there that uh, has flipped a home or is flipping homes as a business, we want to talk to you about your story. I think there's something to learn in every one of these deals. So first-time flippers, live-in flippers, professionals, guys that are terrible at it. I would love to do a show with somebody out there who tried to flip a house and lost their ass. I know it might be a sore subject, but guys, I think that'd be great. I think there's a lot our audience can learn from uh, the stories of a home we lose money on. I mean, I'll be the first to admit I have not made money on every single property that I flipped. So 
If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe now because there will be episodes where I am going to show you guys deals where I have actually lost money because that's what we are all about here on Holton Wise TV, complete transparency in the real estate business. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Back, 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 back to those days. I was running, 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 running. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.